U.S. military judge accepts the guilty plea from an American soldier accused of killing 16 Afghan villagers. The soldier had filed a plea in return for avoiding the death penalty. Sergeant Robert Bales appeared before a military court in Washington state. He admitted to 16 counts of murder in one incident in southern Afghanistan back in March 2012. Bales also pleaded guilty to six counts of attempted murder and seven other assaults. The U.S. Army insists that Bales acted alone. But an Afghan fact-finding mission found that up to 20 U.S. soldiers were involved in the carnage. People in Afghanistan are far from satisfied with the proceedings. Robert Bales should not have reached a plea deal with prosecutors in order to avoid a death penalty. He must be punished with the death penalty in order for it to be a lesson to other criminals. In fact, we wanted him to be on trial in Afghanistan. Killing of 15 to 20 people is not a joking matter. We don't want the American court to say that the soldier was mad. How could a person who was mad walk out of his base up to two to three kilometers and commit such killings? If he was mad, why did he not kill his colleagues? He has to be punished with the death penalty. Well, to discuss that a bit further, and I'm joined with Mr. Edward Corrigan, who is a human rights lawyer, who is joining us now via Skype from London, Ontario, from Ontario, pardon me. Mr. Corrigan, thanks a lot for joining us now. I want to ask, you know, what is your opinion on this case as a whole? Certainly, you know, the death penalty is used in the United States, and in a case where 16 innocent Afghans were killed, certainly you would hope that the death penalty would be an option. Well, it, it certainly was an option, but unfortunately or unfortunately, depending on your perspective, uh, people in the United States quite often enter into plea agreements. And part of the plea agreement is it avoids the expense and the, the risk of a trial, but also it uh, saves the state a great deal of money. And the, what the state offers is some sort of reduced sentence. Uh, in this case, I think the soldier did it, but I also believe that the U.S. authorities are really covering up a much larger crime. Uh, I recall reading reports that the Afghans who investigated the massacre did report there was more than one soldier involved just wasn't one crazed uh, madman who, who acted uh, out, of, out of order. Um, in fact, there's been many incidents like this, probably hundreds, maybe thousands, where innocent civilians have been killed and there has been a consistent uh, cover-up. Uh, there's uh, some of the, the problems where, uh, which are, are now with, from WikiLeaks and that was the fact that a helicopter killed a bunch of uh, reporters and killed a bunch of other uh, Afghans and then killed, or Iraqis and then killed Iraqis who came to rescue was all documented and this was covered up by the government. There's been some recent studies have come out about the Vietnam War which would show that My Lai and some of these other massacres were just like the tip of the iceberg. In fact this was almost standard uh, procedure for the Americans that sometimes they were given orders to kill everything that moved within a specific area including animals, children, women and you know war is is, is terrible and, and no doubt uh, many many human rights uh, violations occur uh, and this has been occurring in iraq and it certainly has been occurring in afghanistan and when you dehumanize your enemy you justify uh, killing them whether it's with a sniper uh, rifle at you know a, a kilometer away or dropping bombs or firing from a, a helicopter you can't uh, you can't distinguish between civilians and combatants and it really is uh, an attempt on the part of the government to, to crush and to terrorize the population to beat them into submission and uh, quite often it's retaliatory. One or two American soldiers are, are killed, and then the, their soldiers and the friends go out and attack uh, civilians who are totally innocent of, of the event, but nevertheless uh, suffer victims. And in this case, there was uh, 16 innocent uh, Afghans killed, uh, many more injured, uh, six counts of attempted murder, seven other assaults. And uh, it's you know, unlikely that one person could have done all this by himself. And like you say, it wasn't a, an act of, uh, of madness. This was an act of, re of revenge or an act of uh, aggression against a, a population that the soldiers have been taught to dehumanize, to hate, in order to rationalize their own uh, military actions against them. So this is, uh, unfortunately, a, a, a long pattern of war. It goes back to Vietnam, the My Lai Massacre, hundreds of other massacres, certainly in, in Iraq, uh, and now Afghanistan. And it uh, is unfortunately... Uh, it, civilians are killed, women are raped, uh, babies are killed, some cases their skulls are smashed in. Uh, this is clearly not uh, military uh, activity or not required, but it's because you dehumanize the enemy and that justifies uh, all sorts of uh, aberrant behavior and, and, and you know, violence, even war crimes. 
in this case, Mr. I Corrigan, if I, if I could just come in, I just wanted to get an, another brief question in, if, if I may. We just have a little bit of time left. Um, I wanted to ask, uh, what does this say about the U.S. judicial system? Does it also show double standards as far as the justice system in the United States goes, as far as how it would treat a case where 16 um, innocent Americans would be killed versus this case of where 16 innocent Afghans were killed? Well, there clearly is a double standard. The fact that the enemies or the Af people killed are Afghans, they're not going to be given the same status. Um, there's, uh, you know, people have been executed in the United States even who have, have had mental, severe mental problems if they've been executed for killing one person. So, you know, you have, uh, actually the United States has the, the largest proportion of its population of any country in the world incarcerated. But if you are a black person who killed a, a white person, you're probably going to face a, uh, the death sentence and, and probably not offered a plea bargain, just taken to trial and executed. But if you're an American soldier who kills 16 Afghans, you're going to be treated with a very different standard. So yes, racism is, is involved. There's a, a double standard that's massively employed. And uh, obviously the lives of 16 Afghans are, are not worth uh, the same as, 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 you know, one American, you know, how they react to uh, this attack on the, the Boston Marathon. Right, I, do, I do sincerely apologize, Mr. Corrigan. It seems that we will have to leave it for now, but of course, as always, we do sincerely appreciate your insight. That was Mr. Edward Corrigan speaking to us live from Ontario.